Yo, what's going on you guys? It's your boy Jarrell from Namarama. I absolutely adore what the Elizabeth River Project has done out there in Portsmouth with Paradise Creek Nature Park, the 40 acre green space slash oasis. But today I'm standing on Kali Avenue here in Norfolk, right outside the brand new Prue and Louis Ryan Resilience Lab. The Ryan Resilience Lab is a global model for coastal resilience. In this special three-part series, we join Resilience Research Coordinator Victoria Dunch to tour the facility and learn about the many green features that can help businesses and homeowners mitigate the effects of sea level change. Oh, there she is! There's Victoria. That's what I've been looking for. So I'm Victoria Dunch, and I am the Resilience Research Coordinator here. Okay. I lead tours. I help plan programming that happens here. This morning I was helping to weed the buffer, which okay. is why I'm dressed like this. <laughs> I also help to coordinate with our local research partners who are interested in doing research out on our back dock, research dock area. Yeah. A woman of many hats, as they say, right? Indeed. And Elizabeth River Project built this facility to model to homeowners, businesses, developers, how to live and play resiliently in yeah. a floodplain. We have all these really cool green systems to show folks so that they can install these things, you know, kind of plug and play, whatever works yeah. for you. How do we continue to live in areas that are subject to flooding right um, in a way that keeps us safe and that keeps the river safe. So everything about this building is really designed to help us live through sea level rise yeah. and the incredible flooding that we're now seeing. Yeah. So that's why the building is raised so high off the ground. Um, it's why so many things are on floating platforms. Right. So I'm really right. excited to show you some of these things. So you mentioned green projects, but this, this is a, a green wall is what it's called? Yeah, we have this green screen or green wall, however you yeah. want to phrase it. And so the idea is that you have plants like vines growing up the side of a wall, mm -hmm. in our case, the south facing side of the wall, because you have all of this solar energy hitting the south facing side of the wall. And we want to be able to insulate the building so all of that greenery keeps all that solar energy from heating up the building. You save money. You're not contributing to climate change because where does that energy come from? It comes from burning fossil fuels like coal, oil, and methane gas. So using native species is a great example of how you can shield your buildings and keep them safe. So for example, one of the species that we have here is coral honeysuckle. Okay. And that's a species that the uh, hummingbirds and butterflies really like. So. Yeah. We love a, our pollinators. We sure do. We love our pollinators. So here we have a rain garden. And so rain gardens are much like normal gardens, except they've been excavated fairly deeply mm -hmm. um, and then backfilled in with more absorbent soil. So here in Virginia, we have a lot of clay. Clay is not very absorbent, right? So we backfill in with these more absorbent soils that hold on to water and allow, ultimately the rain garden just allows the water to soak back down into the ground more gradually. And so everything about this site, the Ryan Resilience Lab is designed to capture, filter and absorb storm water. Yeah. And that's important so that we're not creating polluted runoff to the river um, and it recharges our aquifers. Folks from this area may know that yeah. Norfolk is experiencing some of the highest relative rate of sea level rise in the country. And that's okay. because not only are we experiencing sea level rise, just like everybody else is, mm -hmm. we're also sinking. Mm. We're sinking because we've pulled so much water out of our aquifers. Interesting. So let the water soak down into the ground. Right. Plus you've got native plants, another plug for native plants. <laughs> native plants have really long root systems. Yeah. So again, it just makes it easier for the water to percolate down into the ground. I think it's the coolest part about this system or this, this, this space in general is a lot of these things you guys are doing are things that homeowners can do for themselves. Yes. Yeah. So actually, when you come to visit us, we have all of these QR codes around the yeah. space and what those are for. So people can scan those and then get a sense of, well, how much does that cost if I want to do that? Where do I get that system from? Uh, a manufacturer, an installer. And so we're not necessarily promoting any one specific right. system or anything. We're just trying to give folks a launching point mm -hmm. so that you're not just like, yeah. you know, how do I do this? Like anyway, we'll head down the stairs and we can take a look at the RAFT. R -A the raft. Yeah, okay. R-A-F-T, it's an acronym. Okay. It stands for Runoff Attenuation Filtration Technology. Just rolls off the tongue, I know. Runoff. Attenuation, attenuation, filtration, filtration, technology, technology, Hang the raft. Me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. so this raft was designed by a local Norfolk company called Infra SGA. And it's really cool. So the idea, I kind of like to think of it like a rain garden for yeah. the street. So yeah. when it rains 
and water builds up on the asphalt and it would turn into polluted runoff mm -hmm. in the river but instead it can run in through the grates here this and this cool. whole thing can fill up like a bathtub okay. and then again the water can just soak back down into the ground that's the yeah. name of the game so we, again we've got all these native plants here yeah. that can handle that level of inundation so it's it's pretty cool and then sometimes you will see like trash or things like that in here mm. but that's okay because then we can come in and clean it out yep. rather than all of that Pulling going into the water you got yep. it you it is a systemic design so that you can put things like this next to roadways and intake water but the idea is that it's uh, cheaper to implement something like this than to have to redesign the wheel every single time. Mm. Um, and it's a way for cities to deal with stormwater runoff when you have aging infrastructure. And so right. more plants, less pollution to the river. I love that. More plants, less pollution to the river. Put that on t shirt That's right. It's all day. <laughs> We've got an EV charging station here. We've got spots for two cars. We see cars here very frequently. Yeah, I bet. So I'm very excited by that. Yeah. Um, and our goal is really to just support green forms of transportation. So it's not just the EV charger. We also have bike racks over there. Oh, cool. Yeah, so yeah. we're make, putting in more public bike racks to just make it easier for folks to get here without yeah. burning as many fossil fuels. Okay, I had a question. I've always heard that like Norfolk is second to New Orleans in terms of like worst cities for flooding. Is that true or is that made up? No, that's totally true. So um, Norfolk is the second... The, the city, the second city in the country most at risk of sea level rise That's because wild. we are sinking. It's because of that relative rate of sea level rise I was telling you about. Yeah, I didn't know that. Speaking of, of flooding, and you notice the colors already, um, but the colors is actually a visual representation of data. So what you're looking at is sea surface temperatures here in Norfolk from the 1870s what? to 2023. What? So of course, blue is colder, red is warmer. And so as you progress through time, you can see down there towards modern day, Whoa. our sea surface temperatures have warmed up a bit. So just the fact that our seas are warming yeah. contributes a little bit to sea level rise, contributes to the, some of the flooding. And then this whole thing you may have noticed is on uh, these pilings. So okay. this whole thing floats. So as the water would come in, this would then lift up. Precisely.